everybody. This is uh, Greg Byrne from the Office of Recapitalization here at uh, HUD headquarters in the Office of Housing. Uh, welcome. Uh, we, we're, for the next hour, we're going to talk about the requirements under uh, the rental assistance demonstration for submission of the CNA e-tool. And uh, uh, this presentation will apply to actually all RAD transactions, what we refer to as RAD 1, but also RAD 2 as well. And um, we will, as you'll learn, be making important distinctions between transactions that are uh, FHA insured and the requirements for those versus transactions that are not um, FHA uh, insured. Uh, but anyway, we're glad to have you here. We're going to um, uh, go through a PowerPoint presentation. I believe everyone who's registered should have been emailed the presentation uh, just prior to the call. Um, and then we'll take some questions at the end, and we're going to have a follow-up uh, seminar uh, in January. Uh, cool. so Michael, you give us an up overview of the system requirements stuff? Yep. So Thanks. the webinar logistics today can be found at the top of your screen. Uh, the chat function and Q&A, uh, once you click on the top, there will be a drop-down menu. Um, you will actually need to click on the chat and Q&A buttons in order for them to pop up on the right side of your screen. The Q&A box uh, is used for any content-related questions regarding the webinar. And the chat function is used for any troubleshooting questions or issues you might have. Please direct any issues, uh, technical issues, to the host, and I will be able to help you out from there. Great. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Michael. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, uh, I'm Greg Byrne, and, uh, but also with me is Robert Robinson from the Federal Practice Group, uh, who's really our financial advisor here at uh, the Office of Recap for a RAD program, and uh, many of you are familiar with Robert and sort of all the work he's done with, with transactions and e-tools and, and, uh, and whatnot. But also Andy Zay from ICF uh, will also, who's been sort of one of the main liaisons with the Office of Housing on the whole development and rollout of the CNA e-tool. Um, so as I mentioned on today, we're going to go through the overview of the e-tool uh, with uh, transactions, no FHA mortgage insurance. Um, uh, we'll have the follow-up Q&A session in January. Uh, we haven't uh, pulled, uh, decided the date yet to it. Uh, but please uh, be part of both, both sessions, and we're going to make a recording. Um, uh, and, but also to say that the, um, the audience today for, for this is really focused on the PHAs or the owners uh, for RAD transactions. It's really not the assessors. Uh, so this, the, the training today is not to teach anybody how to do physical needs assessments or capital needs assessments. Um, the, uh, as we'll point to you later, uh, the Office of Housing has a very sort of rich uh, website of, that gives detailed instructions on how to complete the the e-tool. This is, you know, for most PHAs and most owners, you're going to go out and hire a third-party assessor to conduct the detailed assessment of the property. Uh, this presentation is really about for the PHA. So, what do I do? I, once I sort of engage that that assessor, and the assessor gives me a report, how do I submit this report to HUD? How do I get a sort of a top-level overview of what's in that report? Uh, what are the requirements for me of interacting with the RAD transaction now that I have a third-party assessor? But it's not to actually teach you how to do an assessment. Okay. Um, okay. What are we going to do? You're going to um, uh, learn the requirements for the e-tool uh, for you know all those deals. And right now, it's about nine out of ten are non-FHA. So this is FHA has its own for FHA transaction its own requirements, which will into at some point here. Um, and um, what are the unique aspects of this tool, uh, 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 particularly sort of what's different from what we are familiar with under the RAD program? And what do we have for those reference materials available to you uh, for you to learn more? Um, Andy, you want to sort of give a little bit of a broad overview. Why do we even have this tool? What's, what, what was the reason? why HUD has spent all this effort in coming up with a unified sort of physical condition sort of instrument. Sure. 
This was originally uh, the the genesis for the eTool was a cross agency working group, uh, and uh, we should give an acknowledgement to uh, USDA and the folks at the Rural Housing Service who uh, participated in kind of helping define some of the re early requirements for that led to the eTool. Uh, the goals are pretty consistent; they're kind of stated up on the up on the slide there. Consist more consistency um, with respect to capital needs assessment, a little bit more uh, robust documentation of the work of the assessor. And also I think there's a hope that it will be easier for HUD, the downstream aspects of after, the, after a CNA is submitted, it'll be easier for HUD to work with. There's a notion that HUD would be able to do some benchmarking on capital costs over time. So those are really the, the main objectives there, more consistency, more robust documentation of work, and hopefully some administrative uh, smoothing out of the post-submission process once it gets into the agency's hands. Thanks, Andy. So, so here we are, the Office of Recap, we're in the Office of Housing, and um, uh, so, so not only will all new FHA transactions, or they are actually now are using the, the CNA tool, but um, uh, as well as all multifamily Section 8 transactions um, that are uh, uh, that every uh, so many years the properties will be required to update the, uh, their CNAs, and they'll now have this sort of standardized instrument by which they'll uh, they'll do that. So, okay. Uh, let's take a minute about go through. Robert, do you want to do the slides? Sure, absolutely. Um, as Greg mentioned, the FHA underwritten uh, transactions today, one, those applying for FHA insurance, as of November 1st, they were required to use the CNA e-tool, um, and uh, we've been working inside the group of housing to kind of see what those look like, and they've got about 27 submissions, so it's, it seems to be off to a pretty good start. Um, the RAD transactions, so those without FHA insurance, uh, the requirement is for them to start receiving uh, CNAE tools on the 1st of February. So a little bit of a, of a cushion here. Um, one of the reasons was uh, the submittal process, and we're going to talk about that because that's one of the, the major differences between the two programs. Um, so February 1st, um, the RPCA tool will go away, and the CNAE tool um, will take over. Um, so that'll be uh, what we're going to walk through a lot of that today. So what does it look like? And this is an awfully complicated slide, and so we do apologize for that, but we wanted to kind of lay out in a framework that people could at least get their hands around a little bit kind of what the two tracks look like. Um, FHA has developed a process where the lenders, when they uh, submit for firm applications, uh, will have a, port pro a portal that they'll submit through. And so the right-hand column um, is really unchanged for a RAD and FHA transaction. The only piece that I would like to point out is um, RAD does encourage uh, owners to be very participatory in the reviewing and the approving uh, of those CNAs uh, or PCAs. Um, they need to make sure that they're understanding what items are included in rehab and what items are gonna be included in the 20 year schedule and how the financial piece of that works. For non-FHA insured transactions. Hey, well, Robert, Robert sure, we moved it to it. So on the right is the FHA RAD transaction, which is the same as any FHA transaction, which is, happens to be RAD, but, but essentially everybody who has an FHA transaction since November 1st, whether RAD or not, has to sort of submit through the, 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 both the new tool and through the, the portal uh, uh, that HUD has developed for these e-tools. Uh, so that's to the right. Uh, so therefore, if a RAD transaction is coming in this month and it's an FHA, it's already required to submit, um, uh, the lender is required to submit to the, the standardized new e-tool. And then what Robert's going to go over is on the left is for those non-FHA RAD transactions that we're not using the FHA portal for submission, as you'll show you in a minute, we're gonna use the RAD resource desk just like you do now for uploading uh, documents. Uh, uh, so everything on the left is RAD, which is gonna be the rest of our presentation, RAD non-FHA transactions. Yeah, thanks for the clarification, that's exactly right. So the right-hand side, pretty much unchanged from what's, what's supposed to be happening today. Left-hand side, 
is being implemented as of the 1st of February. So parts of this are no different than what they are today in the RAD program. The RAD program does require a PCA um, in most cases. In all cases, a RPCA tool is required. So the CNA e-tool, which incorporates a number of things, including the assessment tool, which we're going to take a look at, the assessment tool will always be required. Okay, so when a PHA hires a third party to put together their CNA or PCA or whatever term of art they're using, they need to use the CNA e-tool standard. So they'll do it, they'll commission a third party, they'll be responsible for reviewing the information that's provided by their needs assessor, okay? Then they will need to have the needs assessor go in and validate the assessment tool. Um, and we're going to talk about that in more detail. Um, as Greg mentioned, there's a web portal for HUD submissions. This validation engine is slightly different. Um, it's open to the public. There's no uh, user account required, no certifications. Anybody can use it. Um, so the PCA uh, contractor will go in and validate that tool once the PCA contractor and the PHA have determined that they're okay with what, what they're going to submit or, or upload, rather, because we want to make sure we're making a distinction between the eCNA tool submission process and the RAD process. So RAD process is uploading documents, not, not necessarily submitting them. Once the documents are all put together, the contractor will give those documents to the PHA who will then upload the complete CNA e-tool to the resource desk. That includes all of the required documents that are already required. So the PCA scope of work for RAD is unchanged. So there will still need to be uh, a narrative, there'll still need to be an energy audit, um, there'll still need to be this new CNA e-tool assessment tool, but there'll be a few other things that are going to be added to the mix, and we're going to talk about that unique piece of this. Once they upload that, just like today, their transaction manager will review those documents, there'll be an exchange back and forth with the PHA as those, num those documents are refined. The PHA may need to go back to the needs assessor for some changes, um, hopefully not too many. Um, once they do that, and a final version that's acceptable to both the PHA and the transaction manager working with them, that will then be completed and that will be accepted, you know, that upload will be accepted by the RAD transaction manager. A little bit of kind of inside the building uh, notes just to let people know what's end, what ends up happening and how the linkage back to uh, the, the multifamily housing platform. Once those approved through RAD CNAE tools are finished, and the transaction is moving to closing, the uh, recap office will take those in batches and move them into the HUD portal. So that one of the things that Andy mentioned in the overview, um, the idea of sharing all of this data throughout HUD, it's important to get all of the CNAE tools into the web portal at some point in time. And so the RAD ones will be done behind the scenes. The PHAs will not see that. All right. So if you're a PHA that converts non-FHA insured uh, and then so therefore uses the resource desk to upload the e-tool that ultimately after it gets converted, the account executive will be able to see it because we will have transmitted the approved document over to OAMP, uh, the Office of Housing. For PBRA conversions. For PBRA conversions. Um, and uh, so they'll be stored uh, in, inside HUD system. Correct. So as I mentioned, the assessment tool is replacing the RPCA tool. This is something that I want to make sure that I'm stressing for everybody because there's been some, uh, a little bit of kind of miscommunication in, in, on this front. This is not, the, the introduction of the CNAE tool is not as major a change as some people may think for the RAD program. There, there has always been a required tool. This is now the tool. Um, so it's still Excel based. It's a little bit more uh, of a robust tool, so there's a lot more detail that's being provided, but in the end result, the 20-year needs, the reserve requirements, um, the initial rehab, critical repairs, all of those sorts of things that have been always generated with the RPCA tool are also generated through this assessment tool. So it's, it's just a different, uh, a different Excel tool, if you will, than what has been required in the past. Um, with the kicker that the assessment tool and the entire CNA e-tool needs to be validated in that validation engine. 
and Robert, we're going to talk later about what, a little bit more about validate, Absolutely. what it means. Yes, yeah, so we're going to kind, so of that, kind of show that for yeah, folks. We, yeah. we have nothing like that now with the RAD PCA tool. We don't have a validation. It's just a way that housing has built in a series of checks so by the time you submit it, um, that um, uh, pretty much the errors have been removed. So, so uh, uh, we'll be looking for the PHA some, some uh, uploads to include that validation that has sort of gone through that process. But we'll talk more about that in a few minutes. Right, we're, hope, we're hopeful that it's going to be help, it's going to help both the PHAs and the RAD transaction managers because it's going to eliminate some of kind of the common uh, uh, issues that come up. For example, um, the estimated useful life tables. The estimated useful life tables are sometimes manipulated in a RAD PCA tool to be a little bit outside of what a transaction manager is comfortable with. In this case, with the new CNAE tool, those changes are much more in front of you so that you don't have to go look for it. So, but with that said, um, we're going to take a look at what what resources are out there. So, Andy, you want to kind of walk through where we sure. go? So this is, and before I jump into this slide, I just want to remind attendees about the Q&A function. Um, I don't see any questions yet. We're 10 slides in, so maybe we're being crystal clear, but just a reminder, if you have questions, use the Q&A function and we will queue those up and address those um, either at the end of the webinar if we, if we don't have very many or if there's a couple of key points, we'll, we'll hop in along the way. So. Uh, a reminder to, to participants about that. So this slide basically shows you where to find the e-tool. Um, the web link is on the PowerPoint slide. Uh, you don't need to worry about writing that down. If you Google CNA e-tool, the first result that returns is this landing page on the HUD.gov website. Uh, there's a lot of content on this web page, a lot of different training content, which we'll address briefly later in the presentation. What I want to highlight for you is the, the, the two links that are in the red box in the lower left corner there. Those are the two key files that you will need to access uh, for a RAD transaction. The first one is the assessment tool itself. That is the Excel-based tool uh, where a lot of the work is input uh, by the assessor. And then the second link, it takes you to the uh, validation engine, which we've been talking about. Uh, so those are, you know, just Circle those two in your mind. There's a lot of content out there, but the two key two key pieces of the e-tool that you will need to for a RAD transaction are the assessment tool and the validation engine. Hey, Andy. Oh. So, yeah. so let's, let's stay on this for a sec to say um, these. You say these are two key things that the PHA, the audience we have today, and right. will need to do. So really. We're showing you the website where your assessor will get the tool. You'll never need to go to this this place. You don't pull down the tool independently yourself. You've hired an assessor who theoretically, because you've hired them, that they have better the qualifications is they know how to do these assessments. Yeah. They're the ones that are gonna go to this website, pull down the tool, do the do the on site visit, and eventually do the validation. But just so you know where this comes from, here is the, the place. Now, this website also, as Andy said, has lots of different training uh, 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 videos and whatnot on it. Yep. But again, the emphasis on this website is mostly geared at the assessors who have to complete it and not really, in our case, the PHAs who have to sort of then get those assessments from the assessors uh, and understand it and then submit it to, uh, submit to us or upload to us. Okay, thanks, Andy. Great, thank you. So, what is the, what is this assessment tool? So, what I thought I would do now is do a very quick walkthrough so that folks um, can see what this tool looks like. Not going to go into a lot of detail. I'm not going to look at every page. I'm not going to touch everything. This is not meant, as Greg has pointed out a couple of times, this is not meant to be a how do I use the uh, eCNA tool, um, but rather just to give you a sense of what it looks like. Those of you familiar with the um, RPCA tool um, will be happy that it's all Excel-based, um, but one of the things that's been done for this, which is really, really cool, is there's a, been a, there's a form that's created. So in the, in the RPCA tool, people will remember all of the various tabs across the bottom that have to be completed, okay? 
You can do that in this tool, but if you prefer, you can open up a form and as the macros run in the background, a nice little uh, visual basic form comes up where you can enter things. So I'm going to pause for a second while this thing is populating all it's supposed to populate. There we go. So this is what easily bounces through the various tabs on the worksheet. So there's a participants tab where all of the players can be listed, so a kind of a contacts list, if you will. Okay. Then there's a property uh, uh, tab, which gives you the information on your property, street address, um, those sorts of items. It also allows you to kind of set up what this property assessment scope is about. So you'll be able to select, for example, the RAD program will be selectable in here. Okay. You'll also be able to kind of get a sense of, as the property information is completed by the CNA provider, there'll be a summary of kind of the age of the property and some valuations based on some different formulas that are in the tool. The other nice thing about this tool is one of the issues that's come up with an RPCA in the RAD program is how do you handle multiple sites inside the same um, AMP, inside the same property that you're converting, whether it be uh, a high rise with some garden apartments in front of it, or whether it's a series of garden apartments with maybe some, some scattered single family homes in the, same, in the same transaction. This tool allows you to set up different sites and describe those. And then if you flip over to the building section, you can actually set up different buildings on those various sites. So if I have, um, again, a garden apartment um, with bunch of townhouses that are kind of scattered throughout a, a complex, I can actually set that up very easily in this tool. The ability to copy and paste um, buildings and that sort of thing exists, which didn't exist in the RPCA tool before. Um, there's also a way to set up various unit types. So if you have a, a, a two bedroom, two bath, and a two bedroom, one bath, or a two bedroom, two and a half bath, you can make all those distinctions very easily um, in this tool as opposed to kind of forcing those configurations into the old RPCA tool. Um, it also looks at uh, common area space, different utility types. So those of you, again, familiar with the RPCA tool, you know that you have the utility types and rates page. This is the same sort of thing. So I've got all of my tenant utility information out on the right and all of my owner information out on the left. It also will tell you if the tenant is paying for it or if the owner is paying for it. So it's a nice way to get all of that sort of information in the same place. Um, also, inspections. The requirements for the inspections are no different than they were before. The nice thing about the this tool is, is it checks behind the scenes for you as a PHA or an owner to make sure that the required inspections that were necessary were done. So if, the, if your needs assessor, for example, was supposed to um, look at 20 units and they ended up only looking at 19, um, that's going to be caught here much quicker than trying for you to actually count through and make sure. Same thing on the accessibility um, requirements. So you're supposed to, re you're supposed to ex make sure you have 5% accessible units and you have to inspect those. All of those various pieces are added into the tool and checked in the validation engine. The components. This is, for those of you familiar with the RPCA tool, this is your CAP needs input page. But each unit, each, each component is based on different property uh, categories. Um, so the tool is set up very nicely so that you can see all of the various pieces and all of the various permutations that you have in the various uh, options. There are a few other categories that you can add to. Um, so that flexibility is still there. But the design of the tool really is to cover the entire inventory of any property that you might come across. Alternatives, very important in all uh, housing programs, particularly in RAD that has the requirement for uh, Energy Star components. So when a, a needs assessor is looking at refrigerators, the tool is going to remind them that they need to look at uh, green components. And you can easily check that uh, as a reviewer looking at these. So those various alternatives. So um, if you've got vinyl siding, it's going to give you a couple of different things that you can do there. A whole gamut. I'm not going to go through any of the details, but this is a very powerful um, uh, part.
part of the tool to select all of the components and the usage and the EUL and all of the details that you would need to see um, in selecting an alternative to replace something that's there. Um, this repair replace recommendation, um, this is going to be the button that the needs assessor fills in. They're going to make their recommendation to you as the PHA or the owner. And then at the bottom, you're going to see this repair replacement decision. This is where you go through and make the decision as to what you're going to do. So the needs assessor is going to make a recommendation. You're going to decide what's going to be done. This is a very important part of your review as an owner to make sure that you are understanding what needs to be done now at your property versus what's going to be done later on the 20-year schedule. Okay? One of the other pieces that's going to be very important for you to look at, which is, is not going to be manually input um, this time, are going to be the financial factors page. This is a kind of a hybrid from the RPCA tool in that the global input page, which most PHAs and most needs assessors never looked at um, because it was hardwired, has these various inflation rates set. These are not set in this tool. So the needs assessors are going to need to set this up for you or you're going to need to take a look at it. Otherwise, when they try and validate, that's going to give them an error. So the guidance that the recap office is giving is the only column that needs to be completed by you in the, as far as trending goes is the next rate. So the program guidance is that these first two items should be between one and a half and two and a half percent. Typically, you see the deposit, the, 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 the annual deposit, and the cap needs inflated at the same rate, so that as the cost of the replacement item goes up by 2%, you're also inflating the amount of money that you're depositing to cover that. So that's typically how a RAD transaction would work a 2%, 2%, or a 1.5%, 1.5%, that, somewhere in that neighborhood. As far as interest earned on the balance, the program standard, again, is 1.5%. You could put whatever works for you. Um, but if it's going to be outside that range, that's going to potentially throw a flag. Okay, and we're going to talk about some of those more dis um, uh, the differences in just a minute. But I just wanted to give everybody a sense of kind of what the tool looks like and the two ways that you can um, you can jump back and forth. So I like this um, this kind of screen here, but you can always close it and go to the various sections and see what's behind um, uh, uh, the information. And anything that you would add in that quick overview? No, I think you you nailed it. And I and like Greg said earlier, I think uh, this is new to the PHA attendees, but most of the assessors who have been working um, FHA transactions are probably already familiar with with the, this content. So, right, and and. Um... Uh, de depending on the assessor and the PHA, the level of upfront coordination in terms of giving the assessor enough information for them to complete some background on the property versus what the assessor will do. A lot of those slides that Robert went through, again, to the extent that assessors, you've been giving assessors information about your building and right. age of the building, all stuff, you would still do that. It's just a, a new form by which the, you, would, you would put it on. Right. And, uh, um, Scott, any questions? Are we, we have any questions? Are you going to, are you going to, be, in terms yeah. of where we go with the rest of the presentation, um, are you going to show them at all uh, the kind of the 20 year schedule page or like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Scott, any questions that have come up for just keep plowing through? Hi, Rob, but I think you can keep going for now. We have a couple questions that we can tackle at the end. Perfect. So, what are the key differences between this assessment tool and the RPCA tool? As walk, when I, let me walk through that. First and foremost, for non-FHA transactions, this assessment tool and the CNAE tool as in, to, in its totality will be uploaded to the RAD resource desk just like you would the RPCA and the RPCA tool today. You're not going to use the e-tool submission portal that the lenders are using for FHA transactions. So I just want to stress that to everybody. This is a different track. You're not going to be submitting through the web portal. You're going to be uploading to the resource desk. And the other piece is, for the financial factors tab, you're going to have to fill that out. The tool will not validate without that being, um, being filled in. And so for that financial factors fact tab, which you're going to get to now, is uh, to keep in terms of how 
you know, what's the rate of interest yeah. to, on your deposits and, you know, how much are uh, costs inflating by. Right. And uh, uh, so you need to uh, get some agreement with your assessor so that they can, since they're going to be completing the e-tool and that's in there, they have to give that, to, in order to complete the tool, they need to give that to you. Um, uh, you need to, to agree on that, for, otherwise they can't complete the tool. That's correct. Absolutely. So, and again, program guidance is that the deposit rate and the inflation rate are tied. So between one and a half and two and a half percent is an acceptable rate. Um, you know, one percent, one and a half percent rate of, of interest on the RFR balances. Those are within the acceptable right. range. All right. Those, so that's our kind of guide. Uh, we certainly ex uh, accept where someone uh, uh, believes that the uh, uh, that the rates are different for some uh, locality reason or sure. something happening with the economy. Uh, but these are kind of the defaults. So Andy, you want to talk about the validation engine? Sure. So the validation engine, it has a, a fancy name, but it, it's really a website. Uh, you're seeing the, the landing page for that now. It's one thing to know is that it, it's publicly available, doesn't require any credentials or logins. You can you can go to it as frequently as you want to and validate. And the validation in engine is where you actually get some of the key information, um, kind of the outputs of the whole CNA process. So the 20-year schedule, list of critical repairs, that is all generated through the validation engine process. And Andy, again, the PHA itself yep. is not doing this. The assessor is completing their work, and they're going and validating and then giving this validated tool to the PHA to submit, right? Correct. Yeah, the the outputs of the validation engine are what are really going over to the to the PHA. Okay. Right. So things to remember in the validation process, um, there are flags that are created. We're going to talk about that, that in just a second. But correct me if I'm wrong, Andy. No S flags or severe flags can exist on a properly validated uh, tool, is that correct? Yeah, so, yeah, once you, you yeah, in the, you will not accept, the RAD will not accept a, 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 a submission through the resource desk that hasn't had the severe flags closed. There are, there are three types of flags that the engine returns. I for informational, and those are just heads up. W's for warnings, and S for severes. I'm pulling that up right now so we can kind of look Great. at it. Great. a good chance to look at that. So here, this is the, this is the, this is the flag page that's created uh, through the validation engine. So, um, Andy, can you just, I know you had started that, and I didn't get it up in time, but. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so I is informational. It's just a heads up. Everything could be absolutely a-OK, -okay, but it's just a heads up. And then do you have some W's? Yeah, so warning, W is for warning. And Robert, you do want, for any warning flags, you do want a comment added explaining from the assessor explaining that, correct? Right, so I'm, yeah, absolutely. So I'm showing, I'm highlighting column G here of this, um, this flags page. These need to be completed. The notes, any W flag, needs to be explained. Um, I flags, we would like to have them explained, but any W flag needs to be explained. And and I guess to, to finish the logic chain out, Robert, if it, ha if it has an S on it, you don't want it submitted. You want that fixed up before it comes in. That's exactly right. So, so if a PHA, so PHAs and owners out there, if you receive a validated um, e-tool from your assessor to upload to the resource desk, and it has S flags in it, the transaction manager is going to immediately kick them back. They're not going to do any reviews. This is the very first thing all transaction managers are going to be trained to look at is this flag notes page. They're going to kick back anything with S flags. They're not even going to look at it. Um, and any W flags that aren't explained are going to be another cause to, to reject the financing plan out of hand. And hopefully anything that's a W that ne needs to be corrected, the uh, assessor saw the W, uh, and before giving it to the PHA, it corrected it, and it doesn't show right. up anymore by the time we get to this, this stage. So, so again, looking through the, the lens of a PHA, what do I need to know about this validation 
engine. It's, you know, that, that the assessor, after they complete their review, they have to run it through the validation engine and it creates this report. And you as a PHA or an owner of a mod rehab property or something like that, um, uh, you know, are then engaged in a conversation with the assessor. And one of the things you may be saying is, what's the deal with all these flags? You know, wh why are these flags here and are these important or not? How, how severe, how, how critical are these? And uh, you may end up uh, kicking it back to an assessor saying, uh, looks like a bunch of these could be resolved. Let's get them cleaned up before we send them to, send them to HUD. But, but HUD, as Robert says, HUD will not review a, uh, an e-tool that has a severe um, flag. Right. So the other thing that's created um, through the validation engines that's very important uh, that Andy alluded to is the, the uh, this CAPNE's input, uh, or the, sorry, the, this kind of assessment project summary. So what this provides uh, are a number of things, but most importantly for the recap office and for the, uh, these owners and uh, PHAs to know is that this is where you see what are my critical needs, here are my non-critical needs that are going to be done, my kind of rehab, if you will, and then here's my 20-year schedule. So this is a very important thing for everybody that's using the tool to be looking at because here, for example, the asphalt shingles are going to be replaced out in, you know, year nine, year eight, year nine, year ten. This is how your 20-year schedule is getting set up. So this is the output from all of that data that's been entered in the assessment tool. So this is the summary information that's generated and this uh, uh, assessment summary has to be submitted as part of the overall CNA e-tool um, onto the resource desk. It needs to be uploaded with the regular, with the rest of the package. So uploading the uh, CNA e-tool is no different than what we've done you know, in the past. You're going to go to the RAD resource desk, um, which I think everyone's familiar with, but I'm going to just do a quick glance out so that people know what that is. So RAD Resource Desk. Everyone's seen this before. You're going to go in like you normally would. You're going to log in um, and you're going to upload these items just like you would um, any other piece of the financing plan submission. But unlike the previous versions where you were simply uploading the narrative, the energy audit, and the RPCA tool, the CNAE tool has a couple of different or additional pieces. So in addition to the assessment tool itself, the flag notes and the assessment summary report also need to be included. So those are in addition to the assessment tool itself. So there are kind of three pieces um, that are added that are replacing the one that you did before, but they're all driven off of that assessment tool. Again, we've talked about this. This is what I, this is how the resource desk works. Um, the resource desk. Uh, everyone should be familiar with how this is going to how this is going to work. So Andy, you want to talk about the resource materials that are represented? Sure, sure. And there there are uh, like I said earlier, there are a lot of resource training resources out there on the. Uh, HUD.gov CNA eTool landing page. Most of those are targeted at the assessor audience and less applicable. Um, I would call out a couple of things. Just the one key document is in the top left corner there, instructions for use of the eTool. Uh, anybody who is trying to complete an assessment using the eTool needs to have that. That's kind of the, the software manual, if you will, to have hand in hand. There are a couple of different training resources, some tutorials, and some web-based trainings that can be taken at any time. And then one document down at the bottom in under public resources is the Ask a Question Desk. Uh, if you have a question about the use of the e-tool, you can, if you go to the next one, you, you can, you click on that and that it'll take you to the AAQ Desk, Ask a Question. Um, Robert, I know that you have an existing resource desk for RAD-related questions. I think the basic way to think about this is if you have a question about the use of the e-tool, go to the AAQ desk. If you have a RAD policy question, go to the to the RAD resource desk as you normally would. Yeah, that's a very uh, important yeah very important distinction that Andy's making. This 
This AAQ Help Desk is a fabulous tool for those that are using the eCNA tool. It's not a fabulous tool for someone who's looking for information about how the RAD program interprets replacements or that sort of thing. So yep. continue to go to the RAD resource desk. Um, there'll be coordination between the two help desks, which will be which will be fine. But right. just you know, if, if if you yeah, I think Andy's absolutely right. This is this is a CNA e tool specific page. Yep, and we will you know if if we get a question that was more appropriately addressed to the other help desk, we'll reroute it. But th that basic decision rule is important. Right. So questions, Scott? You mentioned that there might be a couple that we can pick up at the end. Yeah, we have a couple questions. Um, I'll start with Matt's question. Um, he's asking, is it the readiness financing or closing coordinator who is going to review what is uploaded to the RAD resource desk? So just like today, the financing transaction managers review all of the financing plan submissions, and so everything that's been uploaded through the CNA e-tool uh, description we just went through is going to be reviewed by the financing transaction manager. This is a part of the financing plan, just like the operating pro forma, the development budget, all the other items that are included, that's when this is getting reviewed. So anybody that's uploading something to the resource desk earlier than financing plan submission, just like today, should not expect the, the tool or the, or the CNA to be reviewed until the financing plan is submitted. That's a great question, but that's, that's, that's when it's going to happen, the financing plan submission. Okay, thanks. And then we actually have a two-part question from Nathan. Um, if the PHA hasn't determined whether they will convert with or without FHA debt, can they move forward under the RAD protocol and then have that work transfer over to the lender if they decide to use FHA debt? That's a fantastic question. And the good news about that is yes, because the CNAE tool requirement is now universally accepted. So if they procure a CNA e-tool and they don't think they're going to use FHA insurance and then they decide to do it, their lender is going to be thrilled because they're going to be able to hand that CNA e-tool to the lender and the lender can move forward with that. So that's, that, is, that is, it should be, as opposed to today um, where there's been some confusion back and forth over the last few years on what's acceptable or not, in this case, CNA e-tool procured for RAD is going to work for FHA or non-FHA. Just also remember that in RAD, you know, when do you submit the e-tool? Um, you submit it when you have your financing plan ready to be reviewed. Right. So, so uh, by then, hopefully, you know whether you're going FHA or That's not. That's a great point because the, the you know a submission for firm application is the same thing as financing plan submission. So those two things are kind of in tandem. So I'm assuming that that the questioner is asking if I procure the CNA e-tool. Um, early on to help make my decision as to what I want to do, which is a great thing to do. Uh, there may be some updates that are necessary, but yeah, that's... And we'll take also anybody who has, who is somehow is forward thinking and, and already has procured a CNA e-tool and is ready to submit before February 1st, we'll take that. Absolutely. We have no, we have no problem. You can just upload that. So. Yep. Great. So I think you kind of hit on the second part of Nathan's questions in there, but just to make sure we, we get clarity on this. Um, in furthering his question, he asks, can a lender use the existing CNA, or do they have to get a new third-party assessor to come in and do the work, essentially the same work? I'm not entirely sure I understand the question. If they had a just a general CNA that was commissioned... No, I'm sorry, this is the same questioner. And so, you know, going back to this question about whether they're going to use FHA debt or not, um, and they go and they procure a, C, a CNA, and they want to now transition that so it can be used by the lender, um, is it your sense that the lender would be able to just pick up that existing CNA, or would the lender have to go out and procure their own third-party assessor? It, it, is, it is my my thought, and that maybe Andy can chime in too. But I, my thought would be yes. If it was if it was properly procured, I would see no reason why the a lender wouldn't accept a CNA e tool. It's done by a third party either way. Andy, yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Unless the lender has a hang up, uh, I I can't see why that would be a problem. And Nathan, if uh, if that question isn't coming across correctly, you can go ahead and type another one in there to me, and I'll read that one out as well. 
Um, in the meantime, we have a question from Rocco about how long an e-tool is good for. A year. Yeah, isn't it a year, Andy? Yeah, I mean, do you have a, is there a RAD specific standard about when the study was done? And So RAD, RAD follows the map guide. Okay. So I think my, my, in my, my, off the top of my head, I've always kind of used, used a year. Um, they might, it might be six months and they need a desk review update. And a, and a year is the entirely new tool. Um, but I, you know, there's, there's, it's in the map. It's whatever the map yeah, guide. The says. map guide, the map guide rules, and Robert and I believe that's the right number. But we will, we will confirm that. Yeah. Um, we will just, we'll send a when we send the uh, materials out, a copy of the, the recording out to folks. There's a Q and A function of all the questions, and we'll confirm that answer uh, when we return serve on that. And just uh, might as well make sure everyone knows what the acronym MAP stands for. Accelerated Most, yeah, accelerated pro processing, right? Right. It's the, yeah. Essentially, the instruction to lenders of, of submitting FHA applications. Right. Okay, and we have another question from Mike. Is the CNA e tool required for new construction RAD projects? Yes. The assessment tool, the, tool the, the, the RPCA tool was always required, and the assessment tool will be required in this particular case. And the reason I'm making that distinction is that the CNAE tool encompasses everything, the narrative and, and all of the other pieces, whereas the assessment tool itself is what's used to generate the rehab schedule and the 20-year schedule. So, so only the assessment tool will be required. You will not have to do the narrative component of that or the energy audit. So yes. Okay. Um, Glenn's question is kind of similar at the beginning, but then changes towards the end. So um, Glenn asks, for demo and new construction, would we need to submit the e-tool? Right. The second part of the question is also, if I'm submitting my finance plan now, do I need to submit the e-tool for non-FHA debt? So, so for non-FHA insured transactions, you have until February 1st to submit the RPCA tool. February 1st, everything has to be CNA e tool. So Glenn, if that helps drive your time frames. That's all the questions we currently have right now. I'll just throw out to the audience. If you have any more, please go ahead and submit them. We have a couple more minutes. And while we are allowing time, we have a follow-up session in January. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, so, and I think, Robert, the intention of that is this was an introduction for the PHA audience. Uh, folks will probably study up, read these PowerPoint slides, and may come back um, in January with a few more questions once they've had a time to think it over. So that, that is intended as more of an open, open format webinar to really just be Q&A focused, correct? That's exactly right, Andy. Thanks for teeing that up for us. So, yeah, so the idea for January is twofold. One, Hopefully people will have thought about this a little bit more and they have some more questions. But two, we're hoping, again, knock on wood, that we will, uh, have, that RECAP will have seen some CNAE tools um, submitted through FHA because it's required today. And so we'll have some, you know, granted it won't be a lot, but we may have some best practices. We may have found some places where there's some clarifications that we need to make prior to the February 2nd um, rollout date. So um, RECAP was just good. That's kind of a, an opportunity for anybody who's, kind of still struggle a little bit to, to get some help prior to the February, February 1st uh, cutover date. We actually have a good clarification question from Mike that just came in. Great. Um, he asks, you said the assessment tool. Is that different than the e-tool? <laughs> Andy, I'm going to let you take that. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> let me see if I can do this. Uh, it's a good question. The e-tool is what we've been calling the collection of individual tools. So the assessment tool is the Excel tool that you saw Robert demo earlier. There's the validation engine. So collectively, that collect those all those components are what we call the e-tool. 
we do try to be specific when, we're, when we are working in the Excel tool and refer to that as the assessment tool just for kind of consistency and labeling. Um, so if, if the requirement is to, you know, to submit a completed assessment tool and the validation components for RAD-only transactions. All right, we're okay. good. We're getting a few more questions coming in. Do you want some more? Yes, okay, good. <laughs> All right. Um, so Jamie asks, will this take the place of the PIH GPNA, will it need to be used for PHAs, PNAs that need to be submitted and updated every five years? Yeah, so, so this, you might want to do a little vocabulary there as well. Yeah, with those acronyms. <laughs> yeah so uh, public housing, you know, either who have no interest in converting to RAD or might be converting to RAD in the future, you have to live by public housing rules. And public housing has its own standards for uh, P&As, physical needs assessments. And they are uh, closely uh, uh, studying the, this, this uh, CNAE tool, but it is in no way required for public housing. Um, so this, our whole presentation today is purely uh, in connection with submitting a financing plan for a RAD1 or RAD2 transaction. Okay. Um, another question from Rocco here. Do you have a list of vendors who have prepared assessment tools? Yeah, so we really, for the department frowns on, uh, uh, you know, in any way doing something that might look like we're sponsoring or, or giving a nudge or whatever towards any particular event. There are multiple vendors out there who, who uh, have been doing uh, uh, PCAs and are uh, ready to be submitting these e-tools. I think the I have two suggestions: you can either just simply Google, and you'll find a bunch of names will come up, and you can quickly look at them. But also talk to your some of your peers in uh, that have gone through RAD, uh, and you can ask them sort of who they've uh, who they've used, and who's been who, who they've had success with. But there's a big marketplace. We have another question pop in here from Jamie. Are the rules the same in regard to tax credit applications needing the assessment tool only? Right, right. so exactly the same thing. So, so the, assessment, the assessment tool only would be uh, new construction, uh, tax credits, or gut rehab as defined as down to the stud. So those three exceptions would not have to do the entire uh, uh, scope of work. They wouldn't have to do the narrative and the, and the um, uh, 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 energy audit, but they have to do the assessment tool. So the one that's dropped off that list is FHA used to be exempt, but now FHA requires this, so we're all in, in line with that. So now we've gone from four exemptions to three. Looks like that's it. All right. All right. So uh, just on behalf of uh, all the presenters today and on behalf of the department, um, we want to thank everybody for uh, participating in this. Uh, look, be on the lookout for our announcement of the follow-up Q&A session in January. And um, if you have procured under the old RPCA system, hustle and get your <laughs> financing plan in by January 31st, and you won't have to worry. Um, all right. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk again soon. Thanks.